Here is an overview of the Quickly tab block. Tabs are a navigation element used in web design that allow users to easily access different areas of a site or different parts of an individual page. It's easier to think about tabs as tabbed dividers you'd find in a filing cabinet, used to order related content in a logical way without overcrowding visual space with excessive information. In Quickly, you have the possibility to build tabs in two distinct ways, using interactions or the tab block. With interactions, you have full control of your tab since you build its structure from the ground up using whichever block you want and you manually set up your tab's interactions. On the other hand, with the tab block, don't worry about setting up your own interactions every time you want a tab. Simply link the tab block to the tab content et voila. This allows you to focus better on design. And rest assured, using the tab block doesn't constrict any of your design freedom and actually liberates you from dealing with interactions and classes, etc. If anything, it speeds up your workflow. The way it works in Quickly is, the tab is to be used in tandem with the tab content block. However, you can't just simply add a tab block and then a tab content block and expect them to work. Both these blocks need to be respectively contained in the tab list block and tab contents blocks. This way, it makes linking both these blocks easier, since with just the tab contents block ID, all the tab blocks and tab content blocks will automatically link together. In the Gutenberg editor, let's add a tab list and content block. As you can see when we open the Quickly Navigator, both these blocks automatically come with a tab block for the tab list and a tab content for the tab contents block. To add a new tab, simply select the tab list block and click the plus symbol. You can add as many as your heart desires. The same principle can be followed for the tab contents block. However, don't be alarmed that you can't visually see the new tab content blocks that you add after the first one. This is normal because by default, the first tab is active and visible with the corresponding first tab content. You can only see the other content blocks once you select the corresponding tab blocks. So, if you wish to view the second tab content block, select the second tab block. However, to be able to tab through your newly added tab content blocks, you always need to link the tab list and tab contents together for it to work. The way in which it works is, in the tab list setting tab, you enter the tab contents block ID so that they can link up. So we can swiftly copy the tab contents block ID. I like to do this by opening up the Quickly Navigator and selecting the tab contents block. Here, we can right click on it, which opens up the context menu, where we can copy its block ID. Selecting the tab list block, we can paste in the block ID. So now, if I tab through and rename the paragraphs placed in the tab contents blocks, you can see that I am in fact tabbing through different tab content blocks. It's handy that we can so easily tab through all our tabs on the back end, as if we were on the front end. However, if you don't like the idea of having to edit with all your content being hidden and wasting time by tabbing through every time you want to see how your content blocks are looking, don't worry. In the tab list settings tab, you can toggle the show all option that as its name indicates, opens and activates all the tabs so that the content is made visible. Rest assured, that this toggle only affects the back end and doesn't have any incidence on the front end. By default, both the tab and content contain a heading and paragraph, 
which allows you to visually see the tabs and its content in the editor. However, they can of course be removed and replaced by any other block you desire. We will now move on to designing this block to make it look more appealing, to show how simple it is to jazz it up. First, I will start by wrapping my tab list and content blocks in a div so that their width can be identical. Now we can start by styling the tab blocks. I will simply add some padding and style the heading and rename them. As a reminder, padding creates spacing around an element's content inside of any defined borders. Conversely, margin creates space between block elements. I will quickly add a background color to my section for a pop of color. We can add a hover styling to the tabs so that when the user hovers, a pale white background appears. I will now copy link this tab block in order to have two more tab blocks. As you can see, we aren't adding a background color to our tabs on normal mode, since we only want the background to be white when the tab is active. We can achieve this thanks to relative styling. Selecting the tab block, we can add a relative style by selecting the plus symbol in the primary tab and then opening its rules. We can give it a familiar name, leave the combinator, set the selector type to class and type in CC tab active. Basically, this rule means that when the CC tab active class is added to the tab block, which it is when the tab is open, then our styling will be applied to this tab block. In the relative styling editor, I will simply be setting a white background color. I will repeat the same process for hover mode so that the hover color we added for the tab block doesn't affect the tab block when it's active. As you can see, even in the editor, we can see the changes applied which is handy to design the active class. However, you can be even more complex and specific since you have at your disposal all the advanced properties you could possibly need. I will now copy link this tab content block in order to have two more content blocks. When we select different tabs, when active, they light up with a nice white background, which is simple but efficient to let the user know which tab is open. We can now move on to styling the tab content blocks. Before I do though, in the tab list block settings tab, I will toggle the show all parameter so that I can easily see how I'm editing my different tab content blocks. As you can see, all my tabs have the active styling applied to them with the white background color, which is perfectly normal since they're all active. Since I can now see all my tab content blocks in the tab contents block layout tab, I will set a column direction instead of row for a more convenient positioning. As a reminder, when we talk about flex direction, we're talking about the sub-property of the flexible box layout module. It establishes the main axis, thus defining the direction flex items are placed in the flex container. The default flex direction is row, which follows the same direction as text. Thus, elements are placed next to each other. Whereas the column direction is opposite to text direction, thus elements are placed on top of each other. On a side note, these three tab content blocks and the paragraphs they contain are linked together. So if I change the tab's content background color or padding, the rest pick up the styles seamlessly, which is great to quicken your workflow. This means that the first tab content block acts as a main block 
that controls the style of other blocks. Selecting the first tab content block, I will add a heading block and fill in the paragraph. We can then add a background color, add some padding, as well as a left and bottom border shadow. We can now save this page and check it out on the front end. Without having to wrap our heads around setting up time-consuming interactions, we have a pleasant looking tab navigation block that does the job, that takes half the time to build. Heading back to the editor in the tab list settings, let's go over the last remaining feature, the active tab. This feature allows you to select the active tab when the user first loads the page. So if you wish for the second or third tab to be open or active instead of the first one, you totally can. All you need to do is open the drop-down menu and select the one you want. So let's say I want my second tab to be active on load. Let's check this out. There we go. As expected, the second tab is active and open, but we can still tab through as expected. Before we move on to responsiveness, it can be useful to know that the tab reacts to URL changes, which means that whenever you link to the ID of a tab block, it will automatically open that tab. It can be used either as a link or as a trigger, which means a link in a page that doesn't force a refresh. So if I add a button block and link it by adding a tabs block ID, When clicked on it, it opens the desired tab. Conversely, we can link to it directly from our search bar by adding a hash to the tab's ID. Last but not least, the tab and tab content blocks are of course responsive, meaning on different screen sizes, the appearance of the blocks can be modified suitably. As with any other quickly blocks, the tab and tab content blocks are no different when it comes to responsiveness, whether on tablet or mobile. You can make your tab look appropriate by adjusting their font size, padding, sizing, and so on. As a final side note, our tab and tab content blocks are accessible and we try to keep them up with all the latest specifications. And that's how the Quickly Tab block works.